welcome to Beyond the Exposition, the podcast for the website of the very same name. We are the podcast that, just like you two, are back with a brand new release after a very long absence. And as always, I'm joined by the marvellous man of interruption, Nick. Happy snow, Donnika. Happy snow to everybody. How are you, man? Yes, I will explain things. <laughs> we yeah. are in the middle of a blizzard in Ireland. This is this hasn't happened for many years. This is only my third snow ever. I know this on the continent, you got to play with snow all the time, but not for me. I know. I, I came from a place where I ever hardly see snow, so I'm a miss too, yes. as yourself. You were close to that Africa place. Nearly. People have been asking, like, we got an email in from Connor91. From who, from who, from who? Connor91, hold on. Connor91 from London. He wants to know where we've been. Well, again, like you two, we've been off saving the world and not playing FIFA at all. <laughs> exactly. And always, again, we have moved studio. It seems to be a running team here. Every podcast we've had to move. Because we are chasing something, maybe. Don't say a dream. <laughs> Please don't say a dream. <laughs> oh, no, I don't. <laughs> ah, God. It's just a good movie, perhaps. Anyway, movies for today, Don. On this week's show, we have Milk. We have Frost Nixon. And we have got a few of your questions. And we don't have Princess Mononoko. We have La Nuit Americaine in the section we call stuff we like. Now you must like too, because you know what? We did like it, and you will like it too. <laughs> All right, join us after a little musical interlude and we will talk about all these wonderful things. First film up for discussion this week is Milk, starring the lovely Sean Penn. Your only friend. On screen. I hate the man. <laughs> Come on, leave him alone. No, he's arrogant. Oh, he I... talks crap. But in this, he's he okay. Talent. No, and this he's good. Yeah, he's a good actor. Uh, he's he's the opposite of Robert De Niro in real life. He lacks a bit of personality. Robert he has De no Niro. personality whatsoever because every character he assumes is his new personality. Oh. Unlike Penn, who has a, a very unlikable personality in real life. But to the movie, like all the movies up this week, and also all the movies out for the past two months, it's a long one. Yeah. What are we talking? Over two hours? Two and a half hours? 128 minutes. What we say? Yeah. That's over two hours. Who does this film? Who makes it? Directed How by Gus Van Sant, who is a great, great man. What does he do? He's a man from Elephant. His last important job was Paranoid Park. And he basically brought us on the screen the last days of Kurt Corbin. And Paris Je Thème and some other movie. Good Will Hunting. Good one. Yay! Good Will Hunting. <laughs> I got my Ben Affleck finally, reference. Finally. Yeah, because, only, because the you only are, films I know and watch are films that have Ben Affleck in them. Because you are a star system driven typical audience. You need a good star to get in there. Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. Really? <laughs> I, I got to see his films because I quite like him. Uh, yeah. He's not really a star, man. He wears a wig. <gasps> really? He does, yeah. But do you want to know something about Ben Affleck? Yeah. He's not in this film. Go on. <laughs> go talk. Go talk about the film. <laughs> With this pen man. Harvey, the story of Harvey Milk. This gay guy from San Francisco. <laughs> you had to throw it in there straight away. This gay guy. He's a man who happens to be gay. Um, Absolutely. And the whole film happens to focus around that gayness. It's a real story. We have to put that out there. Yeah. The movie tried to depict San Francisco in the 70s when they tried to basically take over a whole district of San Francisco to make their own area, to do whatever Now, they, they didn't want. try and make a gay city. They just wanted their own little district. Yes, exactly. Castro. Yeah, the Castro. This film follows the life of Harvey Milk, an American politician, the first openly gay American politician. Uh, maybe a bit too fast, according well, my to description my point of the film. To- yeah, both. Both your description hey. and the the movie. I mean, the first part of the movie ran away as uh, a troll in a supermarket. Wait, wait, wait. Throw. He gets shot. There. That's my full sum up of the film. Yeah. Dead. It seems that you are spoiling something. Shot dead. No. But. Hey, listen. People, star-driven people like me, will research a film before they go to see it. Unlike you, Mr. Hate Americans for no substantial reason, man. <laughs> this is good. This is good. So you always, basically you are telling me that you always know what you are going to expect from a movie. 
I try to know the basic outline. I'm not like so, people who I've argued with recently, some of our contributors and emailers, who read the book of the film uh, right before they go and see the film. And they'll make sure they do it. It's horrible. It ruins it. Absolutely. Even though, yes, he did die in real life and everybody knows that apart from Nick over there. <laughs> but... It, it, it's stated in the first line of the movie, so... It's was, fine. There, was there a book of it? Uh... I would say that somebody wrote a book about the Harvey Milk story at some stage. This person that I know, she has read Revolutionary Road, The Reader. Is there a book of Benjamin Button? There might as well be. It's called The Script of Forrest Gump. She probably saw the Frost Nixon interview. That's not right. That's not a go see film. That ruins a film. Also because... He dies. There is Did no, I mention that enough? There is no link usually between book and movie. Also because there are two art medium completely different. You can't really compare. You can compare because the bloody same story. Couldn't you know. be like me and just don't read books? And I just consume th- films. This could be another I'm approach. a purist. Yeah. I am more pure than you. Even though you are... <laughs> even though I just saw him giving me a look. Even though you are system cell... I'm not a fascist. I just uh, don't like books. <laughs> we are running uh, behind the RV milk for the Castro Street trying to gather uh, boats. Behind. He'd like that. <laughs> I would say it follows this political career in its first part a bit too quick, my opinion. It had to, because he was only running for small office at the start. He had to get through it, because in real life, he tried and failed at, I think, at least four small elections before he even tried for a exactly. bigger one. Okay, let me get straight to this. I think the movie is a good movie. Yeah, yeah we only review good movies. Oh, you don't. get involved by it at the end of the movie, but... The first part, too quick, definitely too quick. Okay, do you say there is a practical reason behind because they have to try to let the audience aware of the fact that he attempted four times before. But the point where the movie slows down as well, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 not politically, um, it's not politically important to me. I mean, uh, we see him struggling in, uh, with his relationship with his first boyfriend, then this new boyfriend who looks like the image of the first one. Uh, hey, Franco does not look like the other guy. Uh, yeah, James Franco doesn't Maybe look like Maybe he's interested Diego in the Luna. same type of guy. I, it happens. He got around a lot in the film. He's like a Kennedy for gay people. Absolutely, yeah. Carry on with your... No, my, my, my point is that the movie, I think, uh, while in the first part is too fast, in the second part, the director is not really able to decide where he wants to lie his first interest. I mean, whether in the political side of the story or in the chick flick mess relationship that usually gay people seem to have. I mean, this also was stated not oh, by... Oh, right. You're saying it, the stereotypical. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> You're hard to deal with sometimes. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, it's not... The movie doesn't doesn't work in a stereotypical way. I mean... Not at all, really. Exactly. Apart from a little bit of mincing. The movie, it's actually really good for another important reason. Uh, the movie is a showcase uh, of a um, string of a bunch of good, good actors. Such as Sean Penn, okay, we all know him. Emil Hirsch, we all know him. Mr. Into the Wild. Great interpretation. And then from James Franco, who is uh, supposedly he's a method actor. He's growing on us, yeah. Franco's a method actor, which got me thinking. Uh, although we, we saw him <laughs> recently in a, a bit uh, cheesy movies such as Knights of Rodante or young uh, audience movies such as Pineapple Express. But hey, no, wait, wait, wait. Go back, go back, go back, go back. <laughs> Good sound effect. All right, he is a method actor in all these films. In Pineapple Express, he takes his works, he probably became a stoner. In Spider-Man 3 and 1, he probably became a billionaire and but- poisoned people with gas. And likewise in Milk, do you think he becomes gay? <laughs> he's a method actor he has to I wonder if Penn is a method actor too it would be perfect but I don't think he is it's I've up had to this him, discussion man. with some people it's up to him anyway he's really really one of the supportive uh, column of the movie and basically if the movie doesn't fail in a too sentimental um, side when uh, 
comes the point where Champagne wants to come back somehow with his first uh, boyfriend, which is in uh, James Franco, Scott Smith. Uh, it's because of his way to act uh, that it's cold and warm at the same time. It ignores the Hollywood, they'll get back together. It follows real life. They have to move on. Franco is definitely a star from the future. Not a star from the future, a star oh, for the future. I would say so. Definitely, I agree. So to sum up, Milk, we like it. Ah, uh, we definitely did, yeah. Go see it. It's very long, though. It's near, Not as long as Benjamin Button. It's near to you everywhere, I would say. So Yeah, you'll be all right once you got Milk. Here we go, Don, with our next film. Do you know that uh, Frost... Frost Nixon, by the way. After uh, his huge success with his interview, started to arrange a summer party. Oh, Jesus, he's telling a story. All right, tell a story. <laughs> Which has became one of the most important appointments uh, in the British calendar every year. I want to get Could there. Could you say, like, a Hugh Hefner-esque party? Yeah, something like this. Yeah, yeah. the British equivalent. Yeah, but I want to get there. And um, he wants to get an invitation. That was the first thing he said after the film. And I was going, <laughs> what? You don't realise the significance of this film? Not about no. Nixon, but of David Frost? The only person in the world who was able to put Nixon on trial? A man who should have been impeached for his crimes? Directed by Ron Howard. Fine. Yes, he of Arrested Development and uh, many good things. Also Richie Cunningham. Has has Richie Cunningham slash Ron Howard a wig or is just bald? He is completely bald, but he always wears a baseball hat. Always. So a wig, basically. You've never seen such a bald man in your life. He's one of those bald people who have got absolutely no hair on the crown of his head. And then on the sides of the temples, he's got a full bush of, like, red hair. Like a road through a ginger forest. (laughs) I don't think that Ron has never recovered fully from being bullied by Fonzie. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I felt that. You were never bullied by Fonzie. He was assisted by Fonzie. Fonzie tried to bring out his inner cool. Yeah. No. You were jumping the shark, Nick. Maybe the Italian dopes were a bit bullied with the <laughs> Rishi. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, Don. Frost Nixon. What do you think? I liked it. This political biography. I really liked it. Ah, oh, forget about the political biography thing. It's it's a struggle it's about how films and interviews are made. It was a good one, but it was a, a bit uh, bland in a way that everything was in was expected. You know. You mean like it was a real event in history in 1977. A part is, but the movie I was edited many times. There are movies such as, for example, Milk. It's an historical fact. But you were taken away from that fact and you exactly, think you're... anything can happen. Instead, you know who the killer is, but you don't see how he can do it. No one dies in the Great film. point. What oh, was Nixon going... dies, but later on in life. What, to, what in I was going to say? Instead, in Frost Nixon, basically the movie is like this interview, which Nixon agrees to do because he thinks that Frost is a weak character who is not to put him in an uncomfortable situation, but who is going to give him just free for all cash. Not only is the cash thing true, which is done extremely well in the film, how cheap Nixon is. Extremely cheap. Nixon thinks will be easy. Almost like a celebrity interview. Yeah, something like this. Also because of the background of the journalists. Uh, Frost, who interviews people like the Bee Gees. Pop stars of his day. However, and this is a mistake many people who have reviewed the film have made, they have called Frost a B-rate interviewer. He absolutely was not. Frost, at the time, was the top of his game, BBC's man. Yes, he did comedy. He was kind of like Jonathan Ross. He done satire. He was like Stephen Colbert or Jon Stewart, but also the serious political stuff. He was not, by any means, a B-rate interviewer. But the point is that uh, you were expecting the fact that this underdog to a certain extent has to win indeed he will win but th- the way it was built it was entertaining was funny, was absolutely involving because you were there saying ah, look, completely fascinated by but you knew everything was going to happen the following frame. Well, that's because there was fake interviews with key players throughout the film, almost like a documentary at times. So each scene was set up by people discussing, I suppose, more of Frost's and Nixon's psyche at the time. Hmm. So that kind of drove you in a different direction, made you think, oh, maybe he mightn't make it. 
But he did. But it's fascinating to see, yes, Nixon's good in it. Well acted, this guy's Frank up for, uh, an Oscar. He just happens to look like Nixon, I suppose. And I imagine he's done some Nixon impersonations in the past. But Frost, although he's not accurately portrayed, he just looks a bit off. But it's a good key insight to how this guy was more than, than an interviewer. He was a performer, and that made people who were working with him worried. But like performer, he arrived on the day and executed it. They knew one of their careers would be made or broken by this. Yeah. Uh, there had to be a loser. The power of David Frost pushing slowly, slowly Nixon to the political death. He wasn't alone in terms of good acting. But we also have Sam Rockwell. Hey, Sam is back. Sam is back after choke, after... Uh, no sex in this one. Uh, Sam is clean cut. <laughs> He's just a straight edge. I'm at mind behind this interview where he his only aim is to try to kill politically Nixon. Yeah, just that beautiful little scene where they meet, where he's going and absolutely not going to shake his hand. Absolutely. He realizes what he's done to America, to the world. <laughs> he said to himself and to his friend, I won't shake his hand. And then yeah, he, he has does, just to contradict himself it. after a few seconds. Great one. As we saw in the film beforehand, we've got a rising star amongst us. There's a character in this. This girl woman. Good looking woman. Hey, put it that put that aside. We all know she's good looking. Why <laughs> else would David Frost go after her? Rebecca Cole. We are talking about uh, Rebecca yeah, Cole. She of Vicky Christina Barcelona. She played Vicky. Yeah, she's just Star out Christina now. Christina Barcelona. I'm not the latest sure. I haven't seen it yet. Woody Allen movie. It. Neither do I. But she's really magnetic, no? Uh, she's really. She has a charming presence. Absolutely. Despite other young uh, Hollywood actors uh, new coming, uh, she's charismatic, uh, quite she, warm, no? She seems like a nice person as well, as opposed to Jessica Alba or Scarlett Johansson. Mm. Now, I don't know if they're that likable, but this girl seems very likable. She has presence. She should, yeah, she should team up with Franco. <laughs> Why don't we send an email to them trying to put them together? Oh yeah, design a baby. I mean, I will try first myself with Rebecca Cole and then I will basically suggest... Uh, I will have to edit that out next. James, <laughs> why do... Hmm? Come on, we are art, we make art. We I know we're making we, art. We, we don't uh... need to, to stick with one. Okay, okay, okay. One way out, you know what I mean? But uh, what about our profitable designer babies? <laughs> <laughs> there was some great scenes about these Italian shoes, Italian loafers. Ah, yeah. Effeminating. <laughs> Would you like to comment on that, Nick? Do you own loafers? I do not. Why? Because so I, have, I, I have shoes with the uh, laces. Oh, okay. Why? Because... Because I'm a man. <laughs> no. right, there we go. Uh, he agrees with America. Uh, I don't really like shoes uh, without the laces. Oh, you'll never be like David Frost then. You uh, wore exactly. them all the time. I'm not in the... You're not going to get invited to his party. Do you, do you think so? Do you just ruin my day now? Put on some loafers. You'll be all right. I will try to buy some fake shoes without laces. In summary, Frost Nixon. Ah, definitely an entertaining picture. Another Oscar runner. Yeah, it is. Which uh, will lead us it's to... It's another... Long February film night as well. Yeah, we should we should do a live Oscar show. Uh, we it won't happen. About. It'll be like the Christmas show. It's not a hard hitting political drama. Like you won't be off put by the topic. Absolutely, yeah. You don't need uh, a lot of background. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're apprehensive going into it, but it was fairly entertaining. Go on, take a gander. It's one of the better films around at the moment. <laughs> You're listening to Beyond the Expedition, the podcast for the website with the very same name. We like to keep things regular here in the program, so we're returning to a section we like to call Tit for Tat. It's an email section where we can respond to some of your questions, emails, whatever you like to do. You can reach us at questions.bte at gmail.com. That is Nick. <laughs> Oh, okay, Nick has a problem with this. Questions.bte at gmail.com. Yeah, what to say? I wanted you to repeat the email address okay. so people could know Can so they wouldn't questions get sick of my email. What? Questions at gmail. Questions.bte at gmail.com. Say it. Questions.bte at gmail.com. 
perfect. We'll be updating the website. We'll be putting more content on it. And we'll be trying to make it more interactive. So <laughs> I do. I, I am interactive. Uh, yeah, you're very interactive. People love to interact with you. But they also want to interact with the site. But we'll be put together a mailing list so the podcast can get out to more people. If you'd like you to be included on the mailing list, you can email us at the above address. They'll, all the links will be up on the website. Also, we will be joining Twitter. It's kind of like a blogging thing. It's community. kind of like a text message community thing where we can just update you with a simple short message. A lot of people know what Twitter is. Again, we put the details up on the website. So, first question. It is from Pavel from the Czech Republic. He wants to know what we think of the Oscars. Mm. We love... Interesting. Okay, we don't love the Oscars. One well, Nick doesn't like the Oscars because he's don't all European think, and artsy. We don't think that Oscar in anyhow is representative of good quality movie but, but why not why not you love making lists you forced me I to make a list and want to go for my I, favorite films were. i don't i don't particularly like actually you did you made me put them in order from one to ten at the end of the year nine at the end of, of the year we are push everybody's pushed to to make a list of well which yeah that's what the americans are doing it's kind of like a chinese new year in february uh, yeah no, but, for well, your list of but i would films. prefer stick with my own list not with the list pushed out by somebody else who to power to bring movies in cinemas without uh, any sort of respect whatsoever. For hey man, the, that's changing now with private cinema and downloading. Pirates, power, pirates. Power to the people, man. We can always just have a look at the films that are... How can be representative an award which is decided by the fact that the movie has to run in three cinemas, in one of the three cinemas in West LA to be taken into account... Uh, I think it's ridiculous. I mean, hey, that's just a criteria you got to fill out. I bet you there's other art house just living awards out, uh, around the world that have strange criteria like that. I bet a lot of these films won't be allowed in it. Anyway, let's leave uh, the Oscar alone and long life oh, to Oscar on. award. Wait, Frozen River appears in the Oscars. Well, somehow they managed to get one. The wrestler yeah. appears in the Oscars. Frost Nixon appears. Milk appears. Anything we've talked about has pretty much appeared. We might as well talk about the films that like are out in the Oscars because like you can't ignore them. Forget about what they're in. In general, it's a pretty weak lot of nominations for the Oscars. Like we've got Curious Case of Benjamin Button, which I saw. You didn't actually. In, in a in coincidental note, I've seen most of the films that are out in the Oscars at the moment, mainly because uh, the reason I love the Oscars because I can get these films. How? I am on the Oscar committee. I am ah. one of the 6,000 people. I've won okay. an Oscar. So I'm entitled to view these films that have been distributed yes. and copied. And Do you think it's any anyone else outside uh, this circle of people, which is just me and you, who believe you? Well, not an American citizen or anything like that. I haven't really won an Oscar, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's people out there that would believe things. Great. Okay, the Oscar is coming. Don't miss it. Oh, miss it. If you want, we will. We might update you. Hey, we might even have a live show. <laughs> All right, uh, final question is from Tina from Manchester. And it's... Ciao, Tino. It's a Tina. It's a girl. It's a girl. Tina. Sorry, Tina. Right. Sorry. Don't insult our listeners. We don't want to scare them away. Sorry, sorry. It's regarding one of your comments in a previous podcast. It's to do... Remember you made a comment, my bones are lifting from the seat? Yeah. Yes, remember that? I mean, you said that in a positive way. Absolutely. Surely my bones would be... If she's trying to say, surely my bones would be lifting from a seat would be a negative thing, like a bad thing, like you were getting up to walk away, like you do so often, because I'm sure Tina is well aware of your track record of how you express your anger through protest by getting up and leaving. But in this case, I believe you meant it in a good way. It's true. It's true, but in that circumstance was just, you know, a way to... To, to praise so in a sense there's a fine line between love and hate yeah okay so when that line becomes famous it's not a derogatory term it is in fact positive so Tina there you go ciao Tina uh, if you want to ask us anything and to be read out in there just email us on questions.bte at gmail.com or else leave a comment on the page Finally, in stuff we like, now you must like too. This week we have a problem. 
We tried to agree. To be, one. Yeah, we didn't agree. It was going to be caught up until an hour ago. Stuff I like. Now, Nick must like too. We're going to do Princess Mononoko. But uh, Nick apparently didn't like it. Absolutely not. Actually, I found it a bit preachy and uh, rhetoric. Greenpeace propaganda. Exactly, all this countryside, the Asia situation. And I have to be honest, also the... Um, You're a city boy, Nick. Also the visual stuff in it. It's, it's not as good as I was expecting from uh, a director uh, like Mizyagi. Hey, do you remember those little itty-bitty men with the twirly heads in the forest? Yeah. They were quite nice bits. Yeah. Hey, they were haunting in ways. See, do you know what I've done here? I've got you talking about the film you refused to talk about an hour ago. But now we have to change the name of the section once again to stuff we had to compromise on. Now you must compromise too. Today we have got The American Night, a wonderful movie from uh, the master of directors from the Nouvelle Vague, François Truffaut. In Italy, it has been called uh, Effetto Notte, The Night Effect. La Nuit American. I didn't know that you can uh, Finally, speak I've French. won up Nicola Marzano on a language. <laughs> I am speaking the most important language related to this film. Are you trying to go hook up some girls, I would say? <laughs> are we allowed? Yes, we are. Like the woman, the woman in this. I want Jacqueline, to marry her. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. B.C. Jacqueline B.C. Yes, you got it right. Do you, you like? Can sp- you can speak French. I can, I could, but... So, Don, in my opinion, the best movie from uh, Truffaut even though it has not been rated as his best movies from many critics. But yeah. it is, according to my point of view. What do you think? You are it? a critic, so yes, a critic has said it. We said a few months back we were going to have a look at this. The things kind of got in the way, like Princess Mononoko, and then we saw it and we're going, <laughs> hmm, maybe not. But this, again, it's another feature by François Truffaut. François Truffaut, yeah, right. it is. Yes, my favourite director. <laughs> with a French oh, which name. you know really, know, really well the name. name. <laughs> All right, we'll break it down. The film was about... Somewhere I read uh, that it's a movie for somebody who loves the movies. Yeah, Truffaut, Truffaut loves it so much, the glory whore. He threw himself in it as one of the main actors, didn't he? Yeah, he, he, he did. He did, I think, also quite successfully. Because he can, because it was a film about the making of another film. It was a film about uh, a director who was freaking out all throughout the process of making this film. Freaking out? He was the calmest man freaking out I've ever seen in my life. He was quite blasé in it. Didn't you know he was meant to be acting? And you know what? I can tell you more. He is like that... uh, in real life, I mean, you met him? Uh, no, I how saw, did you interact with him? You can't speak French. I saw, you I, saw, brought along, me. I, I saw many of his interviews with other people. For example, there is also a wonderful piece of interview about movies with Alfred Hitchcock. He freaks out a lot. Oh, Hitchcock? But, yeah. Yeah, he's crazy. Never mind about him. <laughs> he's in the world. He's as bad as Howard Hughes. He was like freaking out over he thought he could see someone's nipple through a dress and he went ballistic and he had to close down the set and then he had to get a flower to put over it (laughs) yeah now that's a crazy man Hitchcock crazy man Truffaut is on the way anyway let's stick (laughs) let's stick with the movie I think the movie basically has this plot really linear really simple where we can see this crew working out uh, about this movie. The movie is actually called The Movie in the Movie. I want to meet Pamela. I want to meet Pamela. And we are dazzled by all these crises which are going to happen within the movie, both on a personal level and technically in terms of production. There are people who are getting in beds with other yeah, people. that's the most do... important thing. They're swingers, the whole lot of them. But you know what? They hate you. It's, it's, it's cinema. It's, it's the business, man. <laughs> It is funny. I think for some uh, for some reason the movie is also funny and uh, gives you a bit of the idea how in the seventies uh, swingers were acting in uh, French cinema. <laughs> no, I mean it gives you the idea. Seventies, hey, swingers all over the world, except for Catholic Ireland. <laughs> you were still. It took uh, until the nineties. You were still dealing with potatoes at the time, no? I think. That's racist. <laughs> but yes, we were. We love potatoes. I <laughs> fell out of love with them for a while, but now I'm, I love them again. They're, they're back You're in back. the frying pan. This yeah. man passed me a recipe for roast potatoes there a few days ago. I know your listeners are going, it doesn't need that much of a recipe. It really does. 
perfecto, bellissimo. Belli- is, that, is that Italian? Absolutely. Belli- yes. It's more for, for a person than for a dish with potatoes. But Irish people you can regard potatoes as in people, the same yeah. esteem as people. Perfect. So that's fine. Back to the film. It dealt with all problems the director has, like drunk actresses, pregnant actresses, oh, soundtracking, reshooting. I'm reading from a script here. Uh, nerves. Breaking down people. Yeah, personal problems. Like Christian Bale. It's a recent topic. <laughs> uh, let's, let me explain this to the listeners. Uh, for Donneka, Christian Bale... Uh, means Jean-Pierre Leo. You said someone's name instead Jean-Pierre of... Jean-Pierre Leo, the actor. Basically, yes. the actor ah, who him, was yes. a child in the movie in front of Blows mm. is the alter ego. Basically, he worked with Truffaut for all the Truffaut careers. This is Christian Bale, according to your own point of view. Oh, yeah, now I know what you're talking about. He looks like Christian Bale, the main character in it. Yeah, he's mental, just like Christian Bale is currently at the moment. A topical thing. A passionate actor. When you're watching a film, you don't expect actors to be like this. But th- this just shows, like, all the problems. I never thought about all the things you got to worry about when you're making a film. Like, there's a guy. A guy's job is to wipe fingerprints off objects that the actors have touched for reshooting the scene. Exactly. Do you get paid money for that? I would say so. I can so. do that. <laughs> would you like to do that? I wouldn't leave fingerprints anyway because I wear gloves a lot of the time. <laughs> so you could be a perfect killer at the same time. At the same time, you, yes. You need if Christian Bale needs to get any directors of photography whacked in the future. Are you still naming Jean-Pierre Leo with the name of Christian Bale? No, no, real Christian Bale. I, just, I don't believe Jean-Pierre Leo is quite as leave, unhinged as this little... Leave him alone. You know that he's still working for the French cinema. Yeah, but he's, now not, and he's then. French. He's not going to attack me. He's just going to philosophize about it. <laughs> Back to the film. The version we watched was really weird. It was a dubbed. It was a dubbed version. I would say that the dubbed version is not as good as uh, the subtitle version, the original one, which was the the way I saw the movie the first time, basically. But you can't years speak back. French. I can speak, but I can How read Italian understand? subtitles. Oh, there we go. There is another thing: <laughs> subtitles. I noticed an inconsistency in it. There was one of the actors, who Jean Perlio. Did I get his name right? Yeah, yeah. He kept on saying this really annoying line to people: "Our girl's magic." And I wanted to just check up to see was that <laughs> was really too. bad translation, or because they're not magic; they're the same as us. <laughs> I wanted to see if it was a really bad like translation. Did somebody get it wrong along the lines? Said- and then I put it into subtitles, and yeah, it was the right. same. But I left the subtitles on, and I noticed that every other line in the film was drastically different from what they were saying. But I dug deeper, and I noticed that one of the actors says uh, they were describing another crazy actress and the lengths people go to do it. And he says, an Austrian actress who I know. I won't say her name, but in the subtitles it goes, an Austrian actress I know, Hendy Lemaire. <laughs> so it goes, why the hell I, I read that the name. Now? I read the name is scary. I don't know why, but it makes Hendy me happy. Hendy Lemaire. <laughs> yeah, but she's mental. I've done some research into her. She's sued pretty much everybody. She uh, No way. Yeah, she has. She like even sued Mel Brooks for some unknown reason. She got arrested for shoplifting twice. Once ah, this, in the 60s, this once is fine. in 1996. This is fine. I mean, I mean, I still do it. Maybe it was like an anniversary commemoration thing where she goes out and steals. But also, she technically patented how mobile phones work. She stole it off her husband. That's how mental she is. Uh, so, she's dead. So we can say what we like about her. Uh, what I think is, this is what I've come up with. She tell, sued tell us, the company. Tell us. She sued the American version she saw, which had the English language. So she made them remove her name. But however, it remained in the French version and in the subtitle. This is a great discovery, ah, I think. I've done some research, uh, and, man. And we deliver it to you. Also, she drugged her maid to escape Nazi Austria. See? Who knew the making of fake films could be so deep? Too deep. We've gone off topic, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> to end this discussion, here's an example of the quality of this movie. Nick, this film is so great. It was nominated for the Oscars. Two years. Two years? That I mean, the... one after another? Yeah. That this is happen, crazy. Man. No, it's a pretty hard movie to find, so I suggest trying places like Amazon. Yeah, Nick is nodding at me. Amazon. If you choose otherwise, have fun looking for it. It took me two weeks. 
All right, that's it for Beyond the Exposition, the podcast for the website of the very same name. We will be back soon with all the films you love and Nick. You will be back, won't you, Nick? I will try. All right. If you can take anything away from today's podcast, the film you should definitely go out and see, and I'm sure Nick will agree with me, is Clint Eastwood's Gran Torino. <laughs> Remember, go out there, see some films, and feed the beast. That is all from me, Donica, and... Nico. Ciao. This has been a major headache production. See the name.